This video lesson is about projectile motion, specifically looking at what happens when we launch that projectile at an angle. So from our previous uh, set of notes, right, looking at how, how, how projectiles behave when they're launched horizontally, we end up seeing a lot of things that are very, very similar to horizontal launches when we now launch a projectile at an angle. Well, and and the, the biggest one here, right, is that we're still following that parabolic path. <clears throat> Recall that for a horizontal launch, we just see the back half of the parabola where the object is starting at its maximum height. Because when launched horizontally, it's not going to go up. It's going to go downward because that force due to gravity is pulling it down. We have a, a vertical acceleration. We have no acceleration horizontally. And that vertical acceleration is directed downward, so we get that parabola. Well, now when we launch something at an angle, all we're doing is taking our initial conditions and not setting the maximum height at our launch height. And we're not setting the launch angle at zero. We're setting it above zero, which means it is going to shoot upward before reaching a max height and then coming back down. Because our acceleration is still based on the acceleration due to gravity, we still have that vertical acceleration, which means we're going to have a parabolic path. Our horizontal velocity still remains constant. So the formula that you see on the screen of delta x equals v of x times delta t, that remains equally valid for all situations when we're launching a projectile and we're ignoring any force other than the force of gravity. And we're still gonna use time to bridge between horizontal and vertical motion to be able to perform any necessary calculations. So what is the difference? Like why, why, what is so different about it? VYI is no longer zero. That's it. Otherwise, what happened in a horizontal launch happens in an angled launch other than VYI is not zero because that angle is moving upward. So we're now getting some upward motion as well as lateral motion when we launch this projectile. So the max height cannot be at the launch point now, right? The max height is going to be some other distance down the launch. So here we have a great look at a, at a angled projectile launch and we see symmetry, right? Again, how we looked at symmetry in free fall. All that's happening is for a horizontal launch compared to free fall motion, free fall motion, that was the ball is dropped from a maximum height. When we threw the ball up and it came back down, we had symmetry. We see the exact same symmetry when we're launched at an angle as we did in free fall motion for an object that was thrown up, reached a max height and came back down. Now all that's happening is it's moving laterally. And again, that lateral motion remains constant. So if you look at the green velocity vectors here that represent our horizontal velocity, note that those vectors remain pointing the same direction with the same magnitude. The arrows are the same length and they're all pointing to the right. That represents our constant horizontal velocity. At our maximum height, there is no blue vector. And the blue vectors here are representing our vertical velocities. Well, at that maximum height, the object isn't going up, it's not going down, it's in that transition point where it's changing directions, so its velocity has to be zero. Note that this is not an initial or a final velocity. We don't know if it's initial or final unless we look at a specific scenario that would dictate whether that is going to be when we start looking at this launch or when we end looking at the launch. Also at that max height, so long as we are from launch point to launch landing, as long as those two are at the same height, the apex is going to occur at half the flight time, just like free fall motion. When the ball goes up and it comes back down, as long as it's caught at the same height that it's thrown at, it takes half the time to get to max height half the time to come back down because that vertical acceleration is the same. It remains constant. Now what's great about this is any given height. So here we have the, 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 this black horizontal line kind of cutting across the parabola about two thirds of the way up. Well, if we're on the way up and you look at those vectors, vertical velocity is pointing up, horizontal velocity is pointing to the right. On the way back down at the exact same height, 
Now the projectile is moving downward at equal speed, but different direction, right? So the velocity is technically different, right? Velocity is the same magnitude, so it's moving at the same speed, but different sign, right? Moving up on the left, moving down on the right in this diagram here. Another key thing that we see, as long as the launch height matches the point that it lands at, the initial vertical velocity will be equal and opposite to the final vertical velocity because of that previous point. You're at the same height. And when you're at the same height, your speeds are going to be the same. They're just going to be in opposite directions, which is why one then has to be negative. One is going to be positive. Now you notice this dashed line at the bottom that brackets the beginning and the end of this um, projectile's trajectory here. That's going to be our range, right? Range is the horizontal distance that is covered from launch location until it gets that same height on the way back down. That's what we consider range when delta y is exactly zero. Range is not from launch to max height, from max height back down to that same height. Range is from launch to the same launch height later on, on the way back down. So that's going to be our delta x. Our vertical formulas are the exact same here. And that's awesome, right? That means every formula that we had used in unit one is still going to show back up. And now these formulas, the only difference between these and the formulas for a horizontal launch is now we put VYI back in because it's not zero. Since we're launched at an angle, that cannot be zero. So these are the formulas that you're going to see whether, whether we're talking about angled launches or horizontal launches. For horizontal, you just have to remember that you're going to take any VYI, set it equal to zero. But when we launch at an angle, we're moving upward at the launch point or potentially downward. And we're going to have to include that variable. So for VYI, right, you may solve it algebraically here or you may need to use a little bit of trig. And when we use trig, on the left-hand side, we see a diagram of an object that is moving up, and on the right-hand side, we see a diagram of an object that is moving downward. Here is what we know. When you see VI and VF, the white vectors respectively there, note that there is no direction associated with it because that is the resultant vector of v of x and v of y. So that means it is moving both vertically and horizontally as you can very clearly see from the diagram here. Note in both diagrams the angle theta is being measured from horizontal. We could certainly measure angles from vertical. More often than not we're going to measure angles from horizontal here. Now v of x is represented by the green vector. v of y is represented by the yellow vector. We went ahead and tossed in that it's VYI when it's moving up and VYF when it's moving down because more often than not, that's when we're going to see this. However, we could have a situation where both VYI and VYF are moving up and a case where VYI and VYF are both moving downward. That can happen. But what you really need to see here is depending on what you're given in terms of the angle of the launch or the angle that the projectile is moving at through the air, you may have to use trig to find V of X or VYI or VYF. That's important because the formulas from the previous slide may not always have enough information to get there right away. So don't be afraid to turn to trig, solve for that instantaneous either overall velocity, which would be VI or VF, or for one of your components, your horizontal component VX in green, your vertical component VY in yellow, right? So we can't use this to find a range or a max height or, or a time, but we can use this to find the individual components, which can then be used to find range, max height, and time. Because when it's launched at an angle, the common thing you're gonna wanna do is use the velocity at the angle as v of x or v of y, but you can't because that's the overall velocity that it's moving at. 
in order to use any of the algebraic formulas that you've been given so far, you must break that down into V of X, its horizontal component, and V of Y, its vertical component, using trig. We're going to have angles. We're going to have some components to work with so we can solve the entire triangle before moving back into our kinematic formulas. So there's a quick look at some of the concepts of angle launches, as well as how we use some of the math, specifically trig, in order to help us solve where a projectile is, how fast it was moving, and when it got there.